we don't torture. And if you just stay there, I think you'll be sleep well at night. The strategy room is on every day. Foxnews.com. Come now. Come now. Foxnews.com. Shepard's on every day. Studio B, 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the East. The Judge. This is Freedom Watch, 2 o'clock Wednesday. Yes! We are the live desk. Yeah! Martha. Thank you, Trace. Chef, I got a good address. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you very much. Congressman Paul, hello. I know all your friends. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Congressman Paul, welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Trace. Thank you. Chef, thank Chef, thanks a million. That was fun. See you again soon. Congressman Paul, welcome back to Freedom Watch. We just finished, as you probably you. heard, a very lively segment with my colleague Shepard Smith and my colleague Trace Gallagher. Uh, which was uh, simulcast on the on the Fox News Channel. There's a big uproar everywhere, as you know, uh, over these uh, these torture memos. I have argued, as you may have heard me, that the logic behind them was highly disingenuous. That the writers of them were predisposed to authorize the government to do whatever it wanted. And then I heard from Bob Baer, the former CIA agent undercover, who uh, appears in the media a lot, who told me on my radio show this morning that the CIA exaggerated the need for these procedures, manipulated the Justice Department into authorizing them, and there was no second or third wave of attacks planned on the United States, but yet the CIA claimed credit for having stopped them. Does any of this, Congressman Ron Paul, surprise you? No, not really. Uh, it surprises me that maybe that Obama hasn't been a little more aggressive. You know, I, I don't think he wants to pursue it because, you know, he likes the position of defending state secrets and, and what all that has been done here in the last administration. But uh, politically, he got some pressure now. He's saying, well, we're going to look at the people who wrote those memos. But I think you have to look at everybody, the people who participated and contributed. Uh, you know, if you waterboard somebody a couple hundred times, don't you think maybe it is uh, suspicious that it could be torture? You know, I think the best way to settle this dispute is not so much to change the name and just calling torture, uh, you know, uh, special techniques in, uh, in, in the, uh, intelligence. What we need to do, if somebody thinks this is not torture, say, take him in and put a screw through his fingernail and see if he thinks it's a torture or not. I think we could come up with a definition of torture rather quickly. I think we, I think we would, but you know, these memoranda, I don't want to get bogged down in, in the legal issues, and I have a lot of other things that I want to chat with you about. But the memoranda are so one-sided, they, they, they did their Orwellian best to redefine the terms and to say it's not torture unless it is a near occasion of death. Now, there are two problems with that. One, that doesn't appear anywhere in any of the definitions of torture. In the United States federal statutes, in the treaties to which we're party, even in the, in the laws of any other countries, it just doesn't appear uh, anywhere else. The standard definition is any inhumane, painful, or degrading information, excuse me, any inhumane, degrading, or painful introduction without authorization by a judge intended to demean the victim, intended to gratify the perpetrator, or intended to extract information uh, from the victim. Moreover, the torture memos themselves say that the doctors, the physicians hired by the CIA, told them that waterboarding is always a near occasion of death because a couple of drops too much in someone's nose and nasal passages could result in death. You know, one thing, as an almost an aside, I detest the idea that physicians get involved in this. This, to me, is just reprehensible. And, of course, physicians got involved in things going on in Nazi Germany, and that is so anathema to what I think a physician should be all about. But, but this, Allowed this is something... Allowed to stand by and, and say to the torturers, you can go a little farther, you have to stop now. Doesn't that violate the physician's oath of first, do no harm? Yes, I think they should not be involved in anything uh, dealing with death, whether it's abortion, electrocution, or, you know, death penalties, or uh, this type of torture. Physicians should stay away from it. But that's a reflection of our culture, un unfortunately, in that we have been conditioned to accept this. But, you know, even if one out of a thousand people produce some information that they think is is valuable that that can't be a justification i don't think there is a practical benefit from this and uh, yet that's what they're hinging this on that uh, yes we might get some practical benefit but uh... 
there's something else that drives people. You know, under these conditions, I think we lose our humanity. And uh, some people that that go off to war are very decent, complacent individuals. And, and especially in these, these times, it used to be that when young men were drafted, like in World War I, they had trouble shooting and killing each other. But now, when we call up our young people, they are conditioned psychologically to become killers. And yet, what happens when they come home? You know, they're, they're all messed up. So something happens to us as a culture when we can condition our CIA agents to participate in this and not assume any responsibilities. So I think what Obama is doing is very dangerous. He's condoning it. And yet he was asking for, for change, and he wants this to be a uh, techno- technology or a technical argument about who wrote what memo and exonerating everybody else. But I think if you were participating in waterboarding, or especially if you did it many, many times on one individual, it, 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 it's sort of suspicious that it could be torture, and hopefully uh, this discussion will be beneficial and wake up some, some people. One, one last question about this uh, unpleasant subject matter before we move on to some, to some others. Uh, when the government discovered the abuse of pris- prisoners at Abu Ghraib prison, uh, and that abuse consisted of uh, putting dog collars on people and causing them to be naked and scaring them with dogs and putting them in flesh piles and trying to induce them to perform unnatural, uh, inappropriate, immoral sexual acts. The government prosecuted a private and a sergeant. It must have been known by people up the chain of command. I don't know how high up that this behavior either would be condoned, authorized, compelled, or overlooked. If there is evidence with respect to the torture, with respect to the 10 procedures used by the CIA, authorized by the Justice Department, whether authorized under false pretenses or not, if there is evidence that that uh, knowledge was condoned by the highest of authorities, and Karl Rove told me that President Bush read these torture memos in Mr. Rove's presence, so we know the President read them, how high up should the prosecutions go? I think all the way. Uh, otherwise, we don't have rule of law. Uh, otherwise, we are protecting state secrets. You know, the idea that government uh, are, governments are omnipotent. And uh, I'm afraid as soon as they get in power, you know, they people run as good candidates and they say one thing, then they get in their part of the same problem. So I think this is a key issue, and I think everybody should be exposed. That doesn't mean that I know who's guilty and who's not. But to say, well, we're not going to even look into the matter, uh, I think it's very, very dangerous. It's condoning it. It's encouraging it. And uh, if, if we are going to be a people who believe in the rule of law, we should pursue this, and uh, the, uh, this administration shouldn't uh, be able to, to say one thing and pretend they're covering, uh, pretending at the same time they're covering up. Right now, I'm not convinced that, that these procedures are stopped. You know, they closed Abu Ghraib and they closed uh, Guantanamo, but they did, have they absolutely promised there would never be rendition? Morally, if we send a, a, an individual to another country and we pay them to do this, aren't we just as guilty? Maybe even more so because we're really hiding it uh, from the people so uh, it's it's still a major problem and I think this deserves a uh, a major discussion I think what we've seen is the tip of the iceberg I mean rendition is not only morally reprehensible sending a prisoner to a country where we know he'll be tortured writing down what he says and then bringing him back here for prosecution or for confinement it's also specifically prohibited by the federal criminal statute and yet the government has done it And yet this government, President Obama, says that he will do it. Switching gears, everybody knows that the value of the dollar has gone down about 95% since the Fed was first introduced, first came into power in 1913. There's never been an audit of the Fed. The Fed manipulates and, and, and destroys our economy through its infusion of cash, infusions of cash, and regulation, artificial regulation, uh, of the of the cost of uh, credit, you have introduced legislation intended to audit the Fed. You have gotten co-sponsors from all across the political spectrum: Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, individualists, libertarians. What is the chance that this will make it to the floor of the House, will be debate, debated, and voted on favorably? Probably better than any other bill I've ever introduced. 
And this is the proper step. <laughs> but maybe that's not saying a whole lot. <laughs> no, it is doing very well. Uh, after we came back yesterday from our two-week break, I think we had 15 new people sign on. And somebody came up to me and he says, I signed on 